What's up people? Welcome to the second part of the anomaly detection tutorial. So in this video I'm just going to quickly go through the algorithm and uh, what it does and, and the basics of how it works on a very abstract level so you can understand what problem we're uh, trying to solve here. So let's say that you have a data set that's, that's look like something like this maybe where the red ones here are um, the outliers or the anomalies in the data set. Now this is a two-dimensional data set here. You have an X and Y axis and this algorithm works for any number of uh, attributes as it's called in the paper or features, sometimes also the name. So the way this algorithm uh, solves this problem is by taking a bunch of samples from the data set so you won't use the entire data set to begin with. You would, you would use like randomly sampled uh, items in the data set that have the same statistical significance as the original data set. And we're going to get more into that later. <clears throat> so, but let's assume this is a sample that we have here. So what you would do is you would, uh, first of all, you would take the data set. You would select a random attribute. In this particular case, it's fairly easy. It's either the X or the Y axis. And then you would split it, split it on... Uh, at a random place in the data set. But for simplicity's sake, let's say that we split it in half here. And then after that, on each individual split, you continue splitting until you get to the point where either you have reached uh, the maximum depth, the, the depth variable, there's a depth variable, you can see, it, see for example that we're never gonna go deeper than you know 500 splits or something like this. And they use, in the paper, they use 256 as a good heuristical number that they have gathered. So you, you're never going to go deeper than 250 splits. Uh, or you simply reach a place where where you split it and uh, there is only one item in the actual split, in the sub data. And uh, then what you would use is you would calculate the depth of how many splits you had to do until you reach that point. And basically the whole thing with the algorithm is that the more the, the the fewer splits you have to do to get the node to be on its own then the more of an outlier it is so it's it's fairly straightforward so let's see here if I can scroll through the paper here real quick and, and let me show you an, an, an image where they do this thing here so this is what they do so they they keep on splitting it like like this, and then maybe like this, and then this, and this, and this, and eventually you end up with a really small piece of piece of split where you only have like one item, and then it would calculate how many splits you had to do to get to that point, and the, the fewer splits you had to do, um, the better, basically the more of an outlier it is. So in this particular case, you can see isolation of x, y here. It's uh, not particularly anomalating because you had to do a, a bunch of split, splits before you reach this point. But if you look in this particular case, maybe first they split like this, and then then maybe like this, and then they split like this, and then now this item here, you only had to do like two or three splits until this node here was by its own. And that is uh, gonna give it a high score for, for um, isolation. So isolating items is equivalent to um, to uh, being an anomaly in this particular case. And they, they have all kinds of evaluations that they do here in the paper. But I want to go in and see the actual algorithm is here for you to implement. So this is the actual I forest. You can see you initialize the forest and then you set the, the height limit here. This is how, how deep you will go into the splits. And then you would sample, and then you would uh, call this I tree algorithm here that we're going to have a look at later, and then just add that to the forest. So you're going to have a bunch of I trees in your forest. And this is the actual implementation. So it's a recursive algorithm. So it's going to do this until it hits the base case here, where either you have reached the maximum depth, or there is only one item in, in the subset that you're using here. And then you're going to try the exit node or X node. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have Q, which is a bunch of attributes. You're gonna randomly select one attribute from this thing. Then you're gonna split randomly in between the min and max of these attributes. You need to you need to know the min and the max of all the variables in this dataset here. 
and um, then what you would do is you would take everything that is less than than this, put it in the 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 x left, and then the rest of them in the x right. See here, this is like smaller than and then greater than equals to to this q here, this splitting point. So you select the random uh, point between the min and max of the attribute where you say like, okay, this is the left side and this is the right side or the other way around, depending on how you, how we you watch this video. I'm not sure if it's mirrored. Um, and then you would recursively do that in each subtree, like uh, call the algorithm here and then call the algorithm here until you hit the base case. That's uh, so you see, it's not a it's not a particularly complicated algorithm. It's I mean, if you're not used to recursion, you might be a bit little like mind mind boggled, I guess. And then you can use this thing here to get the path length of of, of a specific item. So what do we do is um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we're gonna get into more of this thing. I don't want to give it too much, but basically, you would you would calculate how how deep you go into the thing before you uh, before you hit the thing. But since you have this earlier early termination here, where you might not have seen all the items because you might have stopped because you reached the maximum depth, then you would need to have this additional variable here, c, uh, the c of the the t size and that thing is a probabilistic variable we'll see mm, maybe that's not the best way to put it i think it's going to be clearer later uh, what this thing does but basically it's because you do an early termination you're going to use uh, the size of how many items are left to kind of like guess how deep it would go if you like went the full depth and then you would split uh, you have attributes that you split on and then you check the value that's split on and then you recursively do this on, on, on all the sub paths like like a tree almost so uh, you can think of it as a tree like like going like this on, on all the different branches until you reach your node so um, and, and that thing you use to calculate the path length and then you can just iterate over all the nodes to calculate their score so uh, that's what we are going to do in this tutorial but if you paid attention here, before we can do any of this, we need to have this thing here where you get a subsample of the data by calling a sample function. And that's actually not as trivial as this paper puts it out to be. Like if you don't if you don't know anything about this, you, you you're gonna have some problem problems like doing this correctly. So that's the first thing that we're gonna look into, like this sample function here. How does it work and what does it do and, and what kind of um, what kind of properties you want on such a function. So that's what we're going to talk in the next uh, video. But uh, thank you guys for watching. So subscribe, that's important. And then I will see you in the next video. See you, bye-bye.